Hello, welcome or welcome back to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all the places you can find me should be linked in the description box below this video. Here on the channel you'll find me chatting about my adventures in knitting, spinning, crochet and weaving, all of the fibre related things. Welcome to another of my 12 cast ons making videos and if you are new to the channel and you're unaware of what I'm talking about when I say the 12 cast ons, every year in December going into January I spend 12 days casting on 12 new projects in the hopes that those projects will set me up for my year's worth of making and last year in the sort of 2021 iteration of the 12 cast ons I decided it might be fun for the first time to try and make some videos charting the progress of each of these projects as I worked on them throughout the year. I have been doing that, I feel like I've been recording quite a lot, but so far I think there are three, possibly four <laughs> videos. I'm hedging my bets at the moment because I've, I've definitely, as I'm recording this, I've definitely finished three, but I'm approaching the possibility of finishing the fourth project. Um, so I'm not sure which order these videos will end up going up on the channel. We're in, where are we, October, middle of October. So I'm going to try and push through the last few months of the year and see if I can get at least half of my 12 cast ons finished by the end of the year. So that's my aim at the moment. I'm kind of running out of the smaller projects <laughs> to work on and I've got quite a few sweaters left, which is why I'm hedging my bets a bit and aiming for six rather than the more than that. But anyway, <laughs> that's a lot of ramble. I'll link the 12 cast ons playlist somewhere up above down below. In today's video, we're going to be working on exploring, charting the progress of a cowl project. So in my October dice roll game, where I employ a game of chance to help me pick my projects to work on for the month. I got the prompt, let YouTube decide. So I popped up a little vote on that video and asked the lovely community here to choose between the Driftlines cowl and the Waterlands sweater. And as I'm recording this, which is I think about the 10th of October, so that video has been up for 10 days, the Driftlines cowl has run away with it. So unless a whole surge of people randomly watch that video now, which I think is very unlikely. <laughs> the Driftlines cow has won the vote. So let's chat about the project. It is living in this project bag, which I purchased from Lone Larch quite some time ago, many years ago now, in fact. And this project bag is housing my Driftlines. And this project has not been <laughs> picked up and worked on since I cast on back on day seven. And I can tell it was day seven. Thank you to um, the lovely Judith for these handy dandy markers. I love these and um, progress keepers. They're beautiful little wooden discs which have numbers etched on them and Judith sent them to me for use with my 12 cast ons which was just such a kind and thoughtful gift. Thank you Judith if you happen to be watching this one. So yeah only a teeny tiny <laughs> little bit of progress which um, I'm, I don't know for sure because it's been quite some months but I feel like I started this project and I had to rip it out and start it again a couple of times because I feel like I could have made much more progress than that for one day given this yarn is a sort of thicker weight. It's a worsted to Aran weight yarn I would say. The Drift Lines is a pattern by, I'm blanking on the designer name, I'll put it up on the screen and I picked the pattern, I purchased the pattern um, specifically to use with this yarn and the yarn is a little bit of a mystery. It was a kind gift from a lovely community member here, Maraid, and it's a Rowan yarn but the label has been sort of covered over a little bit and it says the fibre is a mix of wool and silk, um, 100 metres to 100 grams approximately and I think Maraid left a comment to say that this might have been a uh, sort of yarn that never went into production so from like a, a, a factory shop or something like that I think if I remember rightly but it's a beautiful beautiful yarn um this beautiful sort of orangey base with tweedy flecks of blue red yellow gray there's all sorts of colors in here so me so of course I was very grateful to accept that offer so it just remains for me to knit away <laughs> on the drift lines this month and see how far I can get I'm hoping I can make some good progress if not get it finished a lot of you were confident that in picking this 
for me to work on this month I would have a good chance of getting it finished so thank you for your vote of confidence if that was you <laughs> I will do my best to come through and actually it'll be quite nice to knit on something that's a little bit thicker weight a lot of the projects I've been working on recently and usually um, my go-to is four ply or fingering weight yarn so it'll be nice to work on something a little bit thicker on some thicker needles today <laughs> I need to figure out where I am in the pattern hopefully I have marked my pattern well and I can just get to knit in so yeah I'm going to see if I can do that now add a few rows and then once I get over that initial hurdle of figuring out where I am hopefully I can make some good progress and as always I shall take you along the journey with me So you may have just seen me awkwardly making my way through my first <laughs> row of the Drift Lines cowl. Um, awkwardly just because these thicker needles, even though they're not huge, what size are they? 5.5, um, feel really weird in my hands. I guess I'm knitting socks at the moment, which I knit on 225 millimeter needles. And I've got a sweater on the go, which I think is on 3.5 millimeter needles. So yeah, to go up a couple of sizes just feels really quite weird. <laughs> and um, particularly with trying to make one and stuff like that as well. But anyway, I have figured out where I am in the pattern, which is the main thing. Um, I usually keep myself some really good notes because I know that when I put my projects away, it could be a day before I pick them up again, or it could be months. And in this case, as I've said already in the video, I've not picked it up since I cast it on back in January. So it's been a good 10 months <laughs> since I have uh, worked on this one. But I'm on section one of the cowl and you start um, knitting the cowl flat and then you join it in the round. So I think if I remember rightly it's almost like a bandana style and it sort of comes down at the front. I think, uh, don't quote me on that, it's been a while since I have looked at the pictures and I don't print out the pictures when I print out my patterns. So I've knit 16 rows <laughs> of the first section and there are 73 rows uh, to get through and I'm increasing all the while. So I think now I know what's what. Um, in terms of where I am, I think I'm going to just continue to knit over the next couple of days. It's been a couple of weeks since I checked in for this vlog and October has not gone <laughs> according to plan. Um, both James and I managed to get caught up in Covid and finally it tracked us down. I guess it was inevitable that as soon as I started working out of the house with the general public that it was going to happen but um, this is the first day I've been out of the house for the last 10 days. I tested negative today, yay! <laughs> so I'm celebrating with a walk in the fresh air. I've been missing being outside and there's been some beautiful, beautiful sort of sunny October days and I've just completely missed them because I've just not had any energy to do anything. So I was going to try and find a nice, quiet, peaceful place in the park, um, but they've stopped for a second, but they're resurfacing one of the footpaths. So it's not quiet in here at all. I'm grabbing two minutes before they start the machines up again. So I'm going to head down to the beach instead, but um, I will share with you some of the lovely scenes from the park because um, yeah it's a beautiful time of year and I haven't missed all of the autumn colour which is making me very happy at the moment. I'm so tired but this little outing is making me smile. <laughs> seriously grateful to feel the sunshine on my face right now. 
after having been cooped up indoors. It's only a really short walk to get down here, but honestly, the fatigue with COVID is no joke, is it? I know many of you out there have already had it. But yeah, it's the something like the 25th, 26th of October. And I'm so, so grateful that it's warm enough to sit down here on the beach or mild enough, I should say. It's not exactly warm. Uh, just my jumper on. It's yeah, beautiful day. And I've brought my um, cowl down to work on with me before you are wondering if this is just a waffle vlog. <laughs> They're all waffle vlogs, aren't they? Where I'm concerned. Um, I think I'm just going to put my phone in my tripod while I get my project out. I haven't got enough hands to hold my phone and to chat about my project at the same time. This is a super weird angle, but hey, the beach isn't level and it's what I can do right now. Um, so yeah, I brought my grid lines cowl down with me to work on. I'm going to sit here for half an hour or how as long as I can manage and knit a few rows. I'm almost, almost at the point where I'm going to join to knit in the round. I think I've got about five or six more rows before I knit in the round. been sitting knitting for about half an hour or so and it's clouded over I got a little bit chillier so I think it's time for me to head home as I'm still not feeling 100% don't want to push it too much but um, I have added a few more rows to my drift lines and I'm really loving how it's looking I'm gonna head home and make some lunch and then hopefully get to the point where I join in the round so hopefully I shall pop back in a little bit later on in the day I'm also getting further and further through my first skein of yarn. I've got three of these so I think I'm going to have plenty left over although of course my rows are growing bigger now so I'm going to start to use more yarn um, but I think it's almost time for me to wind up a, another skein of this um, mystery yarn from Rowan. <laughs> um, a beautiful gift from Maraid. So um, yeah I'm gonna go home make some lunch, knit some rows, wind up another skein and then probably call it a day for this project today. Excuse the chaos going on behind me. Haven't done any housework for about three weeks. <laughs> it's just been so busy. Anyway, I have joined to work in the round, or at least I thought I did. But you know when you're trying to do 50 things at once, it's late at night, you're watching telly, you're reading a pattern, feeling a bit tired, you probably shouldn't be knitting, and you go wrong. Yeah, I've just done that. <laughs> So for some reason, I went zooming on with my first row of working in the round and then I got to the end of the row and I'm like, something's not right here. And I'd joined in the round, but I'd joined in the round in the wrong side. So yeah, don't know how I managed to do that. So now I'm unpicking and I'm going to join in the round properly with the fabric facing the right way. <laughs> and we'll do that row again. Oops. <laughs> what can you do? Not knit late at night. <laughs> Morning. It's quite early for me on a Saturday and everyone apart from me is still in bed. <laughs> I have just thrown a jumper on over my pyjamas and I'm ready to start my day. I did manage to work a little bit on my drift lines last night. So I've made a little bit more progress of the knitting in the round section and it's getting a little bit unwieldy <laughs> to show you this on the needles it looks like sort of a big bag or something at the moment it's a bit of a mess to try and show it while it's in progress i've been looking ahead on the pattern and i've got about eight rows left until i start the border and then the border is about 20 rows long so I'm close to 200 stitches on the needles at the moment, so not the shortest of rows, but not horrendous either. So 
I'm hoping I will actually be able to finish this this weekend. I have to be a little bit careful about how much I'm working on this because now I'm working in the round. There's lots of pearl rows and pearl rows are a little bit harder on my hands and my hands are working hard at the moment between doing yarn and yarn stuff and my out of the house job involves a lot of lifting and using my hands so um, they're getting a little bit tired a little bit achy a bit more quickly so I have to be a little bit careful about how much I'm doing however I'm hoping to finish the eight rows today and maybe get halfway through the border and then tomorrow my aim will be to finish the border and cast this off so I'm getting really close now I'm really excited and I think this is going to be just so cozy um, I daren't put it on over my head because I'm going to lose all the stitches but you can see the gap there and there's going to be so much cozy warm fabric down the front here it's going to be perfect for chilly days and I've just popped outside for a little bit of fresh air and it's quite chilly out there today so we're definitely heading into those days where this is going to be the perfect thing to wear. really dark <laughs> so apologies for light glare and grummy light but my day did not go exactly as planned mostly because um, I took a nice walk and then I went for a big long nap <laughs> which was good in its own way but I thought I'd just quickly check in because I have now finished the um, main pattern part of the drift lines and I'm about to start the border so I'll see how I get on with that tonight I'm going to try and do I think there's 20 something rows all together I'm going to try and do at least 10 if I can but we'll see how it goes on my hands it's Sunday morning and I can't quite believe how quickly the last four days have gone <laughs> isn't that always the way when you've got a little bit of time off work anyway I did last night manage to get about halfway through the border section of my drift line so I'm really close now this border is really quite interesting um, it's the rows are quite time-consuming in that it's a combination of pearl stitches and slip stitches but you're constantly moving the yarn backwards and forwards as if you were doing a rib and it does kind of make a mock one by one rib effect although in this yarn it's quite difficult to tell don't know if you can you kind of see on the back but it gets lost a little bit in the tweedy yarn on the front but it makes a really nice kind of contrast to the main patterning of of the cowl so yeah I'm really really close now I've got about 10 ish rows maybe 12 to go and then I can cast off so I'm hoping to get that done today but I've got quite a few things on my to-do list that I'd really like to get done today so I'm not sure exactly how many of them I will get done we'll see keep your fingers crossed for me <laughs> it'd be so nice to get another one of my 12 cast-ons off the needles because we are rapidly approaching this year's 12 so my whip count is gonna explode again <laughs> so it'd be nice to try and get a few finished a few things finished in these last few weeks of the year I have reached the end point. I have got to my cast off row, but also sadly, I have got to the end of my second skein of yarn. So before I can cast off, I'm gonna to need to wind off some of this. I don't really want, I want to keep this in the skein if I can, I think. So um, I might try, this is probably gonna be a disaster, but I might try wrapping this around a chair or something and just knitting straight from the skein. I know it's probably a bad idea I'm gonna end up in a tangled mess but <laughs> needs must I am so close now so close look at this ridiculousness I have decided to wrap my skein around my laptop and I'm gonna work from it like this to cast off my project I know it's probably a really bad idea but I'm hoping if I go slowly <laughs> it will be fine let's get the cat hair out of the way <laughs> and um then I can just wind this gain back up. We shall see if I'm back in 10 minutes tearing my hair out. You can tell me that I told you so. <laughs> Thank you. 
Cast off is done. <laughs> so I've got to weave in my ends and give this a soak and I think it's going to be super cosy. I'm dying to try it on but I think I'll wait until after I've blocked it and then I'll come back and show you it on and we can definitely wrap this video up. <sighs> Love it. <laughs> it's been a couple of weeks since I cast off the drift lines and it's about time I wrap this video up. <laughs> I just haven't had a minute to sit down and record the final clip. Although I did try. <laughs> I took my finished drift lines. Actually, I should probably hold it up and show you, shouldn't I? Here we go. It's huge. <laughs> so I did take my finished cow to the local lake a couple of weeks ago, just after I cast it off. I was going to chat to you about the project there. But as soon as I found a cosy corner <laughs> to sit and enjoy, or so I thought, the park rangers came along and started chopping down a tree right next to me. <laughs> so it wasn't very quiet at all. But I did take a little bit of video of me modelling the camel. So I shall pop that in here and I'll probably just voice over the top of it. I'll keep chatting. So I'm super pleased with how the project's turned out and I've worn it a couple of times since I cast off. As you can see from me wearing it, it's a big cosy cowl and it provides lots of warmth, particularly down the front in that sort of bandana style. We had a cold snap here a couple of weeks ago and I wore it quite a lot then because it was just a really nice comforting layer of extra warmth underneath my coat. And it certainly, for the size of the project, it certainly just tucks under your coat and it doesn't feel too bulky or um, distracting. Like you can't really feel that it's there. So I really enjoyed that about wearing the cowl. I do have um, almost a skein of yarn left, which I was actually quite surprised at because based on the information on the yarn label, I thought I was cutting it fine <laughs> for the amount of meters that the pattern suggested that I would use but of course I'm substituting yarn so it's never an exact science. I really love how this yarn has softened slightly in the washing of it and the colour is just glorious. The only one thing I would say is this yarn did stretch out quite a lot and I did not aggressively block the yarn at all. I put it in to soak after I'd cast off and then I just laid the cowl out flat to dry but as you can see the neck opening is quite large which means that without a little bit of finagling if you just pop it on as you can see there's quite a big neck loop however because this cowl is almost designed as a half poncho I would say it fits down over your shoulders the gaping in the neckline sort of does disappear slightly once you've got it sort of spread out across um, yourself <laughs> And I would say if you're someone who doesn't like the feeling of something up close around your neck, then this pattern is probably a nice one for you. Although obviously I can't guarantee that you're going to end up with your finished object exactly the same as this because it could vary depending on what yarn you're going to use. I do prefer my cowls quite close around my neck. So what I have been doing when I've been wearing this is actually taking the back of the cowl, twisting it round and tucking it up under itself and that just catches it in enough to bring it up close to my neck to stop any sort of cold drafts <laughs> disappearing underneath the cowl and there's still plenty of room if you do that to spread it out across your shoulders so I think this is going to be quite a nice versatile wear because of that very fact um, so here in the UK we get very changeable days of weather where it sort of warms up and then it gets really cold so this is sort of quite a nice one for fiddling around with to let in more air <laughs> when you need it so yeah I, I can see myself getting a lot of wear out of this and as I say the colour is absolutely beautiful and it goes really nicely with my winter coat as well yeah I'm super thrilled with this it was a lovely easy pattern um, if you <laughs> concentrate on what you're doing um, to get into you do have to knit and purl I know not everyone is a fan of knitting and purling lots of people like the knitting in the round and find the purling a little bit harder um, so yes just to be aware but it's definitely worth it for the beautiful texture um, of this cowl and I think my yarn disguises the texture a little bit but yeah it's a really beautiful pattern I need to find another project to use up the extra yarn that I have left over. I think there should be enough left for a hat or um, definitely some nice cosy 
um, arm warmers or fingerless gloves I would think so that's something for me to cogitate on for the future because I definitely want to use up the rest of this yarn, this yarn it's so beautiful and I want to say a huge thank you once again to the lovely Maraid for gifting me this yarn because it's been an absolute joy and I really love the finished object so I'm so grateful and appreciative that you thought of me when you found the yarn and um, sent it my way so thank you so much for a really enjoyable knit experience with some beautiful yarn. So I'm going to wrap this up here. I'm actually getting a little bit warm <laughs> wearing this right now inside. <laughs> it's a very grey and overcast day today, but it's um, fairly mild. I hope you enjoyed following this project from its cast on back when we did the 12 cast ons last year um, through to casting off and me wearing the final object. I'm hoping there might be another video like this coming up next on the channel because I've also recently cast off one of my other um, 12 cast on projects which yeah a little flurry at the end of the year which is nice because in a few days time I shall be embarking on a set of new cast ons <laughs> so yeah it's quite nice to end the year with a couple finished I haven't by any means by any stretch of the imagination managed to finish all of my 12 this year but that's okay I'm still raring to go for the next set getting the next set on the needles uh, but yeah I do have to edit that footage and I think I've also got an record an end section for that one too so um, that should be the next one up but we, we'll see I'm not making any promises because um, I'm not sure what time I'm going to have for the editing but anyway whatever happens whatever video comes next on the channel I hope you will join me for the next one and until we do get to spend time together again I hope you get to do some of the things that you enjoy great big willy hugs to you all bye for now bye